Hi, uh, this is Dr. Naeem al khoury I'm a transplant hepatologist and the director of the Fatty Liver Program at Arizona Liver Health. Uh, over the next few minutes, I would like to discuss with you an overview of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, and its burden on the healthcare system in the United uh, States. So first, I'd like to start with the case presentation to show you what a typical NAFLD patient looks like. So this is Tony. He is a 60-year-old male. He has a weakness for deep dish pizza and other fast foods. And unfortunately, he gained weight. He has type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and high cholesterol and dyslipidemia. This is what we call the metabolic syndrome. His body mass index is at 39, um, and uh, obesity is defined as a body mass index of BMI above 30. He does not consume a large amount of alcohol and he presents to our clinic because of elevated liver function tests. Uh, so these are called ALT or AST and these are liver enzymes that increase when you have any chronic liver disease and these indicate liver inflammation. So his ALT was at 66 and normal is less than 40 and his AST was at 76 and normal is also less than 40. So this is the most common presentation that we see in our clinics for suspected fatty liver disease. Someone with obesity type 2 diabetes coming with elevated liver enzymes. So when we say fatty liver disease, it comes from one of two sources. The first one is significant alcohol consumption. This is what we call alcoholic liver disease. And the other source is NAFLD, which is related to obesity and metabolic syndrome. And fatty liver, by definition, is the presence of more than 5% fat within the liver cells. And we see patients with NAFLD that have up to 60, 70, sometimes 80% fat within the liver cells. So the first question we ask our patients is how much alcohol you're drinking, and we have a way to identify what we call a standard alcoholic drink, which is basically 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, and one and a half ounces of hard liquor like vodka or scotch. Uh, each uh, of these contains about 10 grams of alcohol, and again, this is what we call a standard alcoholic drink. So how much drinking is too much drinking in terms of alcohol? Uh, well, you know, for a woman, uh, it's two drinks or more per day, or about 14 drinks per week. Um, and then for men, it's uh, three drinks or more per day, or about 21 drinks per week. Anything more than that is considered excessive alcohol drinking. So NAFLD, again, it's uh, present in patients that do not consume a large amount of alcohol, and typically they have obesity, so it's considered the liver manifestation or the liver illness of obesity, uh, but also metabolic syndrome that includes diabetes, prediabetes, dyslipidemia, and high blood pressure. Uh, so again, obesity is associated with multiple complications, including NAFLD and metabolic syndrome. So NAFLD is uh, associated with comorbidities, uh, obesity in 80%, type 2 diabetes in 45%, dyslipidemia, hypertension, and metabolic syndrome in about two-thirds of patients with NAFLD. And sometimes patients are not diagnosed with these when they come to see us, and we end up making the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes or hypertension. So it's very important to screen for these. How common is NAFLD in the United States? It's about 25% of all adults will have fatty liver disease. So this is very common. One in four adults will have fatty liver. And if you are obese, then it goes up to 50 to 70%. And very importantly, in patients with type 2 diabetes, uh, up to two-thirds will have evidence of fatty liver disease. So I think anyone with type 2 diabetes should be considered for screening for fatty liver disease. This is not just a problem in the United States. This is a global problem, and you can see that different countries have different rates for fatty liver disease, and these rates correspond to the uh, rates of obesity in these countries. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, in the United States, we have a high rate for both NAFLD and obesity. And this uh, slide here shows the uh, global prevalence of fatty liver disease. So it's about 24-25%. Uh, but the highest prevalence is actually in South America and also in Middle East countries such as Saudi Arabia. The lowest prevalence is in Africa. 
Uh, this is a slide from a study that we published a few years back looking at the prevalence of NAFLD in young adults because sometimes, you know, young people think they're invincible, they cannot be affected with chronic illnesses. So we looked at young adults aged 18 to 35 years and we looked at the prevalence of NAFLD back in the 1980s compared to 2010. And we showed that there is an exponential increase. So NAFLD used to affect about 10% of young adults back in the 80s. So one in 10, and fast forward to 2010, and now it affects 25% or one in four uh, young adults in the United States. When we say NAFLD, uh, fatty liver, it's really a spectrum of illnesses, and we start with what we call NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver. Sometimes we call it simple fatty liver. This is just fat accumulating inside the liver, and then you progress to the aggressive form. We call it NASH non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Uh, this is when you have fatty liver, but also you have inflammation inside the liver, you have damage to the liver cells, and that can lead to what we call liver fibrosis. Uh, this is a scarring of the liver, and that can progress to liver cirrhosis. So when we talk about liver fibrosis, we divide it into uh, four stages. Uh, so uh, stage one or F1 is very mild scarring, and then stage four is very severe severe advanced scarring, this is what we call cirrhosis. Once you have cirrhosis, the liver becomes lumpy, bumpy, damaged, and it can lead to complications like fluid accumulation, jaundice, which is when people turn yellow, uh, confusion from liver disease, what we call encephalopathy. So cirrhosis is really end-stage liver disease, and it's not good to have. In terms of the natural history of fatty liver disease, uh, patients that have NASH uh, progress with fibrosis stages faster than patients that just have NAFL or fatty liver. Uh, so if you have NASH every seven years or so, you progress by one fibrosis stage. So if you're 30 years old and you have stage one fibrosis, uh, on average, it will take 21 years to progress to cirrhosis. If you have fatty liver NAFL alone, it takes about 14 years to uh, progress by one fibrosis stage. So that takes definitely longer to get to cirrhosis. Uh, so that's why we think NASH is the aggressive form of fatty liver disease. It is important to note that the stage of fibrosis is really the most important factor that predicts long-term outcomes in terms of dying from liver disease or needing liver transplant. So this is from a study that shows if you have, you know, stage two, three, four fibrosis. These are the patients that we worry about because they can uh, develop complications from liver disease. Liver cancer, or what we call hepatocellular carcinoma, HCC, is also a complication of fatty liver disease, especially when it progresses to cirrhosis. So this is from a study looking at patients with cirrhosis from hepatitis C and uh, NASH, or fatty liver, and it shows the uh, yearly rate of developing liver cancer. So for hepatitis C cirrhosis, it's about 4%. For NASH cirrhosis, it's a little bit lower, but still significant at 2.6% every year. Uh, our patients may develop liver cancer. That's why it's so important if you have cirrhosis from fatty liver to get an ultrasound every six months and blood work to screen for liver cancer. More recently, we started noticing cases of liver cancer in patients with fatty liver disease even before they have cirrhosis. So this is a study from the VA system uh, looking at patients that developed cancer and looking at what percentage had cirrhosis and what percentage did not have cirrhosis. And you can see in patients with fatty liver disease, about one third of these patients with liver cancer had fatty liver disease but no cirrhosis. So this is concerning because so many people have fatty liver disease. NASH or fatty liver is also a common indication for liver transplantation. Uh, so this is from a recent study that we published in 2018. We looked at uh, the cases of liver transplantation in the United States, and we found that if you look at female patients, uh, NASH, fatty liver in red, is the most common indication now. If you look at men, uh, it's actually alcoholic liver disease, but NASH is the second most common indication. So again, we have many people with fatty liver disease. Most of them will not need liver transplant, but because we have so many people with fatty liver, uh, this is contributing significantly to the liver transplants that we are doing in the United States. 
And we are expecting that the burden of fatty liver disease will continue to increase over the next decade or so. So uh, by 2030, we think that we're going to have 100 million people affected with fatty liver disease in the United States. And we're going to have more cases of NASH, the aggressive form, and then more cirrhosis and more liver-related death. So this is leading to a significant healthcare burden in the United uh, States. How do we diagnose fatty liver disease? As I mentioned earlier, typically patients come with elevated liver enzymes on routine blood work, uh, but we can confirm the presence of fat in the liver with ultrasound that shows that the liver looks more bright than normal. This is what we call increased echogenicity of the liver. So uh, the uh, uh, structure of the liver looks more bright again uh, than normal. Uh, we also have a new test called fiber scan. This is the machine we use and this is a very good test, non-invasive. Uh, it looks like an ultrasound, but what it does, it gives you two numbers. Uh, the first one here we call the CAP score and this is how much fat you have in the liver and normal should be less than 280. Uh, so for example, this individual here with the CAP score of 323 has significant fat in the liver. And then the second score is the liver stiffness here, and that tells you the stage of fibrosis or the scar tissue inside the, the liver, uh, and anything more than 10 in, is concerning. So this is a patient with low liver stiffness at 4.6, uh, but this is an easy way to determine if someone has cirrhosis or uh, a lot of damage to the liver. So to uh, close uh, NAFLD or fatty liver disease from obesity uh, is common and uh, it goes hand in hand with type 2 diabetes and the metabolic syndrome. And uh, I think that patients at high risk should be screened for NAFLD with liver enzymes and potentially a liver uh, ultrasound. Uh, and you can use a fiber scan if you have it in your clinic. And advanced fatty liver disease can lead to cirrhosis and possibly the need for liver transplantation. Thank you so much for your attention and hope to see you um, at other events in the near future.